back with another video for you today and this is a video I've been wanting to do for quite a while but unfortunately I don't think I'm gonna get to 20 anytime soon but I do now have 16 Maison Christian Dior fragrances I just picked up my 16th and I figured might as well do a top 15 with one honorable mention so if you want to find out what my top 15 Maison Christian Dior fragrances are then please stay tuned so much for tuning in. This is Sebastian with Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. If this is your first time tuning into my channel and you love watching fragrance reviews, finding out about new fragrances, discovering new brands, and of course participating in giveaways, and still haven't subscribed, please click that subscribe button below and also click the bell so you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. Yes, Maison Christian Dior it used to be called Christian Dior or Dior Privé collection. I first discovered the collection in 2013, just around, just a little after I had started my first YouTube channel about fragrances. So I sampled them all at Neiman Marcus, and in fact, I had done a video of the whole entire line sampling every single one of the fragrances that were in existence from samples. I have that video, I recently discovered it, I could probably air it, but I figured I'd do the top 15. And then maybe if later, if anybody wants to see that video, I'm happy to air it because it features some of the fragrances that are discontinued. Anyway, this is my top 15, I have one honorable mention. Uh, also there's fragrances here that are boutique exclusives now, and I have a set standalone video about which boutique uh, exclusive fragrances you can buy in a Paris boutique such as uh, on the Rue Saint Honoré, the standalone store there. Uh, and then of course there's also a standalone store, I believe it's a standalone store or maybe it's part of a Dior boutique, uh, like an overall Dior boutique. I could be wrong though, I've never been to that one. It's on the Rue, uh, no it's on the Champs-Élysées. But also when I travel to France I also find the Dior um, uh, boutique exclusives uh, from the Christian uh, Dior, uh, Maison Christian Dior uh, collection at uh, the stores of uh, Printemps and uh, Galerie Lafayette. So occasionally you'll find them there and they're not always having every one of the fragrances there. I've wanted to buy Granville and I wasn't able to buy it but this last trip I bought Au Noir. I think it was Au Noir. Yes, I bought Au Noir. Here we go at number 16. It's the brand new one. It's my honorable mention and it's a fragrance called Terra Bella. So Terra Bella is from the brand new collection of fragrances from Christian Dior, Maison Christian Dior. They're very light and there's two in the collection that I really love. Um, Ballade Sauvage and this one, Terra Bella. Now Terra Bella is uh, Italian for beautiful land and the fragrance features Cypress as a prominent uh, or main player note. Along Along with Orange Blossom and Myrtle. This one, uh, to me, I, I could see why it's called Terra Bella and also it's in Italian because it, it, Italy is known for those cypress trees in Tuscany and uh, it totally makes sense for me that they would call this fragrance. And I recently fell in love with this one because of that cypress note. For some reason I'm kind of like favoring these uh, interesting notes. I'm focusing on them and I'm learning them and I'm falling in love with cypress. And, um, uh, I also did a recent video of uh, Bottega Veneta's uh, Cipresso and then also um, Acqua de Parma's uh, Cipresso di Toscana, a comparison video. So I'm, I'm, I'm into the Cypress thing and this is a great one. That's one of the reasons why I bought it because it's a great, great fresh, uh, woody, aromatic, uh, uh, citrus kind of a fragrance. So it's probably my second favorite, favorite from that a collection of like regular standalone fragrances but now they have purple oud as part of the collection now it's not exclusive anywhere and then there's also um, Santal Noir uh, I believe that's what yeah Santal Noir that's also part of the regular collection now so there's Spice Blend which I haven't sampled it but hopefully soon but Terra Bella is number 16 um, Check it out if you like cypress and no uh, fragrances. It's a pretty good, darn good one, and, and that's my brand new one from the collection. So going to number 15, and we're going with uh, Bois d'Argent, this one right here. Now this one, it's a skin scent for me. It's mostly a skin scent, and I featured it on my skin scents video. Now, it's a skin scent because it gets or stays very close to, to my skin. Uh, Bois d'Argent basically translates to silver wood, so it's um, basically referring to like wealthy or luxury, uh, expensive wood. It does smell like that. 
This one's a lot about iris. It's a major iris bomb uh, with along with that myrrh note. So there's lots of resiny touches. There's also some floral uh, notes in here. Uh, I pick up uh, maybe perhaps a little bit of jasmine. Um, maybe just like pretty like uh, basic uh, white flowers like magnolia and things like that because they're not very prominent. And then there's a major uh, musk note in here as well. So it's very, very musky. Now, again, it's a skin scent for me. It does have projection for a little bit and then it just becomes a skin scent, but it's a gorgeous skin scent. It's beautiful. It's, it's unique for a skin scent because of that iris, the powdery touch with the myrrh. Anyway, this is Boire Argent from Maison Christian Dior, Dior number 15. At number 14, going to... A fragrance called Grand Ball. Now Grand Ball is basically translates to the Grand Ball, like the ball you go to, the dancing and the dinners and things like that. So Christian Dior creates lots of ball gowns for the women or for ladies and I believe this is uh, well, it's definitely for the ladies because it's all about jasmine here. This is a main player here. You must like jasmine to appreciate this one. But it's truly a gorgeous jasmine. It is definitely on the feminine side and uh, I think is, uh, Christian Dior is known for creating woman, women's uh, evening gowns and things like that. So I can see the the visuals of those ladies going uh, to the grand ball wearing his beautifully tailored uh, garments. And this one's all about jasmine with ylang ylang musk. There's a peach note in here. There's hedion, orange blossom. It's truly gorgeous. It smells great. It really, really does. And if you love jasmine, this one's a must. Um, it does lean feminine, so those of you guys that don't like jasmine, um, get a sample or decant prior to just doing a blind buy of this one. But I don't think you would do a blind buy, would you? Anyway, that's Grand Ball at number 14. At number 13, it is... Leather Oud. So Leather Oud is the first of uh, several fragrances that are now boutique exclusives for uh, Christian Maison Christian Dior fragrances. And this happens to be ultra animalic. It's one of the uh, most animalic designer fragrances that I have. It um, is very, very smoky. It's very, very leathery and lots of oud, but there's a major, major civet note in here. It smells like civet and it's really, really uh, very, very funky. So leather, oud, smoke, birch wood, sand, amber wood, patchouli. It's intense. It's beast mode. It's really, really like you got to love the animalic fragrances here and it's um, overly intense. Now this is a uh, it's, it's boutique exclusive now. They, they pulled this last year and they put it as a boutique exclusive and you cannot buy them in anywhere else except for when you go to Paris. But I can see that probably this doesn't sell much. It has a specific kind of clientele, especially when you look at the rest of the collection when they, they relaunched all those very, very light and airy and um, transparent kind of uh, offerings. This kind of stands out like a sore thumb because this is the complete opposite of those fragrances. So if you want it, you got to go to the boutique to get it. But it's not that difficult to get it. When you're there, get it. Or if you have a friend going, have them get it for you. Because if you like that sort of thing, you might really like this one. So anyway, this is Leather Oud at number 13. Going to number 12, it is New Look 1947. Now I reviewed this one with Dahlia. If you want to check that out, uh, you should definitely do. It's a floral. Once again, it's jasmine and uh, it's uh, with benzoin. So there's lots of vanilla touches here. Now this one's called New Look 1947 and I believe that Christian Dior had started a, a kind of a fashion movement with the same name. I don't know much about the history of uh, uh, Christian Dior, but uh, that's something I remember reading quite a long time ago. Anyway, this has notes of jasmine, benzoin, vanilla, ylang ylang, tuberose, rose. So it's ultra floral, but beautiful, very vanillic, and really intense. Like it's long lasting, but it's just a big bouquet of flowers with vanilla and benzoin. So if you like vanilla and you like florals, and of course benzoin is also vanillic, check this one out. It's not it's not overly sweet even though it's got vanilla and benzoin. It doesn't smell overly sweet. It does have powdery elements. Anyway, New Look 1947 at number 12 from Maison Christian Dior collection. So up next at number 11 we have a fragrance called La Colle Noir. This one right here and it basically translates to black glue. 
I don't know where the name comes from, but this one's ultra rosy and ultra fresh with watery elements running through it. Not aquatic, but watery. So this one has notes of rose, peony, raspberry, lily of the valley, cassis, musk, and oud. The oud is not so prominent. It's very, very musky. It's clean, it's slightly fruity, and of course, watery. It does hint at a little bit of um, the rose from Louis Vuitton figures because they're from the same parent company and apparently the Louis Vuitton perfumer and Dior perfumer and, and grass have very close offices. I've just heard this, uh, I don't know how true that is, but the, 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 the two fragrances uh, do remind of each other. But if you like a fresh rose, this is definitely one. If you like a watery rose, definitely this one. The water is just like you can feel this, uh, the wateriness, like the liquidiness, and definitely not, a, not an aquatic. I'm, uh, it's, it's not aquatic whatsoever, just just a watery kind of rose, and it makes for a very, very fresh wearing experience. Even though it says it has oud, I don't, I don't pick up hardly any oud with this one. Anyway, that's La Colle Noire from Christian, Maison Christian Dior, and that's at number 11. Number 10, going with Ambre Nuit. Now, this is a very, very popular fragrance in the fragrance uh, community, and it's all about amber. It's very, very light and easy to wear amber, and Ambre Nuit basically mean, means amber night, and I could see that. It's a nice fragrance to wear at night. It's not overly strong. It's not overly potent, but it does have some legs. Uh, it's got a feel of, like... Um, there's like it doesn't have like this thick molasses -y, uh touch that a lot of ambers do where you can kind of experience the thickness this kind of you can see through it rather than like it doesn't stop because it's so thick you can't see through it so it's like a transparency or a translucency about it and but it's really really beautiful uh, I believe um, the, the fragrances from the older collection have all been redone uh, and I think they used to be credited ambergris in this one so I'm assuming there's some ambergris at least I pick up a little bit of ambergris like touches in here uh, with the amber but it's definitely really really rosy the combo of the amber ambergris rose is quite phenomenal and you're going to see that kind of a note come up in another fragrance from this collection further up in the list but Ambre Nuit is a great, great fragrance. If you like fragrances like Grand Soir, easy to wear amber, definitely check out Ambre Nuit if you haven't yet. It's a great one. Anyway, number 10, Ambre Nuit. Number nine, going to Oud Espahan. So Oud Espahan is an Oud and Rose. And Espahan is a city in Iran and uh, known for roses. Um, and this one is a very, very smoky uh, oud and rose slight slight bit animalic touches in there as well but truly a, a gorgeous gorgeous oud and rose so you've got lots of woody notes you've got oud you've got rose smoke resins myrrh floral notes wow absolutely gorgeous this is so good it's really really good it's one of the better um, uh, creations from this house but unfortunately it's below because I like a lot some of them a lot more so it, you can't really like put them up at the top but if you like an Oud and Rose definitely this one's one for you to try there's this smokiness that really gives it a depth to this fragrance but the rose is very very bright and uh, lush um, just beautiful rose very very thick rose and just an absolute gorgeous of a scent. Now this one didn't get pulled, it's part of the regular collection, but it's probably one of the more intense fragrances in this collection. Anyway, this is Oudis Bahan at number nine. Number eight is Gris Dior, this one right here. It used to be called Gris Montan, but now it's called Gris Dior, Grey Dior, and this one is a love at second, third, fourth, fifth sniff. It wasn't like a love at first sniff, uh, if that makes sense to you, because you had to come, ta come back to it over and over and over again. Um, it's unique. It's rose, patchouli, oak moss, amber. It's got this, well, it's, the name is really, really appropriate. There's a great quality running through it, kind of muted and uh, not necessarily like color heavy, even though this is the color purple right here. Anyway, it's really, really unique. It's rosy, but it's not like your rose of um, La Colle Noire or even the rose of uh, Oud Espahan. The rose is kind of like muted with uh, the other notes of patchouli, oak moss, and amber, but a very, very great scent. It's um, totally a unisex scent also. So if you don't know this one, you should definitely check it out.
It's a great one. It's a very underrated one from this house. Gridior at number eight. At number seven, going to Purple Oud. Now, Purple Oud is Oud, pink pepper, saffron, and orange. Now, this one is a combination of two designer fragrances. Um, Gucci Guilty Absolute, Pour Homme, and Ancre Noir. Um, kind of smells like both of them, but it's so good. It's not necessarily a true, like, real oud. It's a synthetic oud, but it's really good the way it's done. It smells great, it wears great, and you smell great. I mean, it's just a really, really great offering. This used to be an exclusive to USA um, online only. Then it became available in Europe hasn't reached Neiman Marcus here yet at least I haven't seen it but it's probably a it's definitely a, a solid offering from this uh, house and uh, after all those light offerings from the second delivery of those fragrances this is a change of pace along with Santal Noir so if you like a, a designer oud definitely check this one out purple oud is a great one from Maison Christian Dior and then at number six going to Ballade Sauvage this is so good this is the first one I fell in love with that second collection of lighter scents love fig and fragrances but first of all it's called a uh, wild ride that's what Ballade Sauvage means and also I have a video on the channel I have a lot of different videos about Dior because I love Dior the video is called Dior is so Sauvage because they keep using Sauvage in their fragrances of course this one Eau Sauvage and all of their uh, flankers and then Sauvage and all of its flankers so Sauvage is Dior or is it are they really Sauvage not really I don't think so but if you want to watch that video check it out but this one is a figgy fragrance it's fig fig tree, fig fruit, solar notes, aldehydes, pedigrain, labdanum, marine notes, and some stone notes. So it's a very, very unique fragrance. To me, it reminds me a little bit of Dior's Dune Pour Homme because that was actually kind of, a, it was a fig fragrance with the fig fruit and the fig leaves. Plus it has a sand note and I get that with this one here. Kind of goes beachy a little bit. It's very, very unique, but very, very good. It's so good. It reminds me of the Mediterranean for some odd reason. So if you like that kind of scent, definitely check it out. If you like fig and fragrances, definitely check out Balade Sauvage. It's a great one. This one is the first one. As I said, I fell in love with that second delivery of fragrances from Maison Christian. Dior collection. Okay, getting close to the number one spot, but can you guess what my number one is? But at number five, we're going with Eau Noir. Now, Eau Noir is one of the fragrances that's part of the collection that's only available in Paris. And Eau Noir is one of the fragrances that I really loved at the very beginning when I first um, started uh, digging um, the collection or experiencing them. Now, Eau Noir means black water, and I could kind of see why it's called Eau Noir. The fragrance is all about lavender, but there's licorice and coffee thrown in. Very syrupy, very molassesy lavender. There's also thyme, vanilla, cedar, violet, and leather. Gorgeous. If you like lavender, if you like it earthy, because the, the lavender's earthiness is there. Uh, the sweetness is kind of removed. There's sweetness in there, but I think it's coming from the sweetness of the coffee and the licorice. So good. Originally, it was created by Francis Kirkchen from Maison Francis Kirkchen, but I think it was redone uh, by Francois de Machy. Au Noir, such a great scent. If you like lavender, you must check this one out. And I did feature this one in my uh, top 20 lavender fragrances video. So that is Au Noir at number five. So at number four, it's Santal Noir. So Santal Noir basically translates to black sandalwood. And I have a couple of videos about this fragrance. In fact, this one actually reminds me of Chanel's Egoiste, but this is a much better version of Chanel Egoiste. And the original Chanel Egoiste uh, the perfumer that worked on it was the Francois de Machy, who was the perfumer of um, Dior now. But he worked with a, another perfumer. I'm drawing a blank with the name of the other perfumer now. But I could see why he created Santal Noir, just to, to kind of like maybe make something that he had worked on in the past and make a better version of it. I don't know, but it really reminds me of uh, Egoiste. This one's all about sandalwood, ambrette, and rose. And this is what I mentioned um, about um, Ambre Nui. It has the rose in there, and it has it here as, in, as well. Now this one, uh, the ambrette, kind of goes into multiple directions as far as smells go. There is a little bit of a medicinal touch. 
Yeah, uh, there's the the ambret kind of goes medicinal to me, like almost like medicine. Uh, ambret also has this fruity facets. Um, it does does go fruity, so there's lots of fruitiness in here. Not necessarily like ultra fruity, but like kind of dried fruits and things like that. And then there's a boozy touch in here as well. It's so good. It's so good. I love wearing this one, and I was so happy when I got it in um, London when I was there. And I think it's rolling out now. It's becoming more available, at least in the rest of the world. I'm not sure if it's making it here in the States as of yet, but if it does, you should definitely check it out. So Santal Noir number four by Maison Christian Dior. So at number um, three, Vetiver. Number three is Vetiver, and it's the number two fragrance I had bought from this house. And I love this one. This one, it's such a great vetiver. In fact, I love this more than Chanel's Sycamore. It's just a great vetiver because that vetiver with coffee beans, it's just so amazing. You've got to smell this one. And this one is one of those exclusive ones. Again, as I said, it's only available at the boutique. So if you make it to Paris, please uh, go check it out. Just go to their boutique and ask them. And then, and if they don't have it there, tell them to, uh, tell them to see if they have uh, them at the other stores or locations because this is definitely one to look uh, to try to get uh, because it's so good but um uh, it's a classy vetiver it's pretty darn good great long lasting and then of course this one wears so beautifully i love it so much more than uh, uh guerlain's vetiver and it smells awesome and in the uh, wet rain and in the winter uh, i love the way this smells on me it just comes alive and vetivers this is the best. Uh, I, I don't know what else to say about this one. It's just uh, sad that it's part of a like a, a boutique exclusive, but if you can get it, do whatever you can to get this one because it's so good. Anyway, that's Bediver from Dior at number two. It is Mitza. Mitza is the first fragrance I bought from this collection. And this is the one, as I said, incense, cinnamon, honey, labdanum, coriander, patchouli, rose, amber, delicious. This one, as I said, reminds me a little bit of Serge Lutin's um, uh, Ambre Sultan. And then, of course, it also reminds me of Absolute Pour Le Soir. The three together, they kind of hand in hand. It's such a great, great fragrance. This is the best. Mitza is named after one of Dior's uh, muses. And it's a boutique exclusive again. So these two with Vetiver are boutique exclusives, two of my favorites. Unfortunate that it's boutique exclusives, but it is. But definitely check out Mitza because it's such a great, great release. Absolutely love it. It's a great amber. In fact, I love this amber more than uh, Ambre Nuit, but they're different. They're totally, totally different and different experiences. This one's a lot spicier and the honey is really, really prominent with the incense that's uh, in here. So this is Mitza at number two. Can you guess my number one? I haven't talked about it yet. My number one is Feb Delicious. You've got to have this at number one. It's absolutely delicious. Now this Feb Delicious is the number 2018 version, uh, not the version from um, when they first launched it because it was redone a little bit. The notes have changed. It still smells very close, but I can, I can smell some minute differences. This one's Tonka beans, caramel, vanilla, chocolate, benzoin, leather, cherries, coconut, lavender. Absolutely delicious, delicious, delicious fragrance. It's one of the best fragrances ever from a designer. Happens to me from the Maison Christian Dior collection, but I love it. I'm so glad that they've kept this one. And you got, if you like gourmands, if you like tonka beans, you gotta try Feb Delicious. Basically translates to delicious bean. Anyway, that's my number one, Feb Delicious from Maison Christian Dior collection, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any questions or comments, please do list below. Also, let me know which of these fragrances are your favorite. Have you sampled them or are you curious to try them? And if I've missed any of the fragrances, let me know if you have a favorite so that I can uh, inquire about it or get it in the, in the future because as I do love this collection, it's my favorite. Uh, next to Tom Ford, it's my favorite uh, private collection or you know exclusive collection of fragrances. Anyway, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, there's a subscribe button below. Other than that, please like this video, please share it, follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and I'll be back with more videos very soon. Have a good one. Goodbye.